Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. My name is Mark, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions. Welcome to my workroom. Um, you know, in the past we've alluded to the different categories of flowers, line flowers, form flowers, some of that, and I told you that we would do an episode based on that so we could discuss those a little bit more. That's gonna be today, so I'm glad you're here for that. Um, first of all, let's talk about line flowers. Line flowers, as you might have guessed, are more elongated types they do create line in an arrangement. So in order for them to create line, um, obviously they're gonna have to have a particular shape and that is more elongated. So these snapdragons would definitely qualify as a line flower. Garden stock also would be a beautiful line flower. And of course, one of my favorites, Bells of Ireland. And as you'll notice, this is not a straight line. This is gonna create curved line. So that's one of the things as a designer that you get to choose is what's the line gonna look like in the arrangement? What's it gonna feel like? What um, kind of motivation or feel do I want in the arrangement to kind of guide the viewer's eye through the arrangement? All an important part of line. So those are line flowers. Next up is a form flower. Form flowers, as you might have imagined from their name, are, they, they have a particular form, most often round. Um, not always, but most often. And form flowers are the ones that you will typically find going, that will be the kind of the focal point of the arrangement where your attention goes. Um, lots of different fun options in form flowers. Um, hydrangea, one of my personal favorites, of course. Um, roses, also a great form flower. Not nearly as big as a hydrangea, of course, but definitely something that would be considered a form flower. Um, Gerber daisies, a beautiful choice for a form flower. Um, this mum is also known as a cremone, is a great form flower, really beautiful. It has a nice shape too and texture to it. So that's one of the things that uh, is kind of fun about it. Um, and lilies, lots of people call the shop requesting lilies in their arrangement. Lilies are beautiful form flowers, obviously not round. They kind of have that star pointed shape to them, but the size and the scale of them make them great for a form flower and a beautiful kind of focal point in the arrangement. Now, <clears throat> I also pulled Alstroemeria uh, because it's interesting. Alstroemeria can sometimes be considered a filler flower, which is our next category, or it can be a form flower. And let's trim some of this bad foliage off of here. Um, I think honestly, I like considering it a form flower primarily because of the cluster of blooms. And so it gives a more definitive shape to it. And I'll show you how that compares to filler flowers. All right. So a filler flower is going to be a much smaller bloomed variety typically. And it's gonna be something that does exactly what its name infers. It fills in the arrangement. It gives filling to it. So most often here in the shop, we use a lot of this Monte Cassino Aster, which is a great filler flower. It's kind of looks like a wildflower. It kind of works beautifully with this shape. It also can be used to create line. So here we're crossing over a little bit, but um, kind of multi-purpose use. Another one of my favorites is Solidago. And Solidago is this yellow one. Again, it's considered a filler flower because of those little blooms on there but it very often can be used to create line because as you can see from the shape, it would be beautiful for that in arrangement. So um, yet another multi-purpose flower. This one is a really pretty one that we use at Valentine's Day in Roses and it's called Limonium. If you look closely, you'll see that it just barely has this little tint of kind of a bluey purple um, in the bloom and it's a great filler flower uh, that adds kind of a nice wispy airiness to the arrangement. And then last but not least, I pulled this one, which has a little more bulk to it. Uh, it's a bit more dense, I guess, uh, but would also be considered a filler flower. And that's status. Um, status is also great as a dried flower. So if you're growing this in your yard, you can definitely cut this and dry it. Uh, the blooms hold well, even after they're dried. So another great filler flower. Um, so let's put together an arrangement using some of these different types of flowers so you can kind of see how they all come together. First, I have to organize my space here. All right. 
So I kind of pre-selected this bucket of things I want to use for the arrangement. And this is going to be our container. Um, I do love working in pitchers for arrangement, water pitchers. I think they have a great shape. Um, I love the fact that the top is a little bit more open typically than the bottom. And I prepped one of my favorite mechanics, the bundle of greenery. So it's just dropped right in and we're ready to design. You may recall also that I've said before that we're going to establish the overall dimensions of the arrangement with the first couple of insertions. So the width we pretty much established here with the greenery, but the height I want to establish with this line flower with the stock. And isn't this a great color of stock? You know, we're coming into spring months here, so I'm excited about seeing some color. All right, so we've established the height. The width has been established. We've got line flower in there now. Let's do a couple of form flowers. Sunflower, it's gonna be great for definitely creating a focal point in the front of the arrangement, but we don't want the back to be neglected. So let's put one back there too. There we go. I'm gonna choose another form flower, which is this carnation. And this color is amazing. There's kind of always a rush in the workroom to get to these carnations first because everybody loves this color. It's like, no, 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 I need those for my arrangement. No, 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 I need them for my arrangement. Well, I pulled rank and kept them for the video, so <laughs> you're welcome. All right, so I've extended the width just a tiny bit uh, with the carnations, which is totally fine. There's the front that we're kind of working on. I kind of want this guy to stand up a little bit more back here. And that's the back. Let's imagine that this is gonna be used on a kitchen island or something where the people are gonna be walking around and see the arrangement from all sides. So that's why I have this sunflower facing this way because there will be people viewing it from this side as well. So we wanna keep that in mind. And another carnation back here. All right. You know, I pulled a hydrangea, but I'm not sure I want the hydrangea in there. Yeah, it looks good, so let's do it. One thing that's good about this hydrangea is the green tones in it. And so it helps the flowers relate to the color of the container. Um, that's always kind of a nice thing to have happen if you're using a particular color of container. Um, it would also work that this container is green. So that's kind of considered a neutral in flower world. And that's always a good thing too. Just using the rose stripper to kind of get some of the thorns off the stem before I put it in. You recognize this, this is my buddy Free Spirit. Love these guys so much. Are you beginning to see that I was in the mood for color today? Yeah, I think so. All right, front, back, we have line flowers, one type, we have two or three different types of filler flowers. I'm sorry, of form flowers. And let's do some filler in the form of this hypericum. I think that'll be kind of interesting and cool. I do love the contrast of these warm oranges with the cool green of this container too. And so we didn't talk about, but can discuss the fact that this foliage can be a line flower also. I wanna add just a little bit more element of fullness to the arrangement in the height. 
So we're going to add that um, ruscus there. And again, stripping off any greenery that might be below water level. A little bit of this fern. This is called flat fern or sword fern. It's a great product. Makes the arrangement feel a little more springy, I think. Thanks to those of you who responded on social media when I asked about potential um, topics for upcoming videos. We got some great suggestions. And certainly today, if you're watching and have a thought or a suggestion about something you'd like to see in one of our videos, please let me know. That's super helpful. All right. Okay, front. Back. And one more little touch. I feel like it needs more yellow. I feel like it needs a little bit more of the brightness to pull in the sunflower color. So we are going to add some of this solidago. And again, not only is the solidago going to be treated as a filler in this, but if you look at the placement of it, it's also going to be a line because it's helping direct your eye out. Kind of certainly adding another um, dimension, broadening up the width of the arrangement a bit. Let's get this tall guy in there. I feel like this guy's moving around a little too much, so I want to reposition him. Okay, that's good. Don't want to forget the back. Remember, people are looking back here. Let's do one more hypericum on the back over here on this lower side. There we go. All right, so conversation about types of flowers. Line flowers, which can be certainly in this case the stock, also the solidagos adding a bit of line. Form flowers, creating a focal point with the sunflowers, the carnations are, the roses are, and then filler flowers, back to the solidago and the hypericum. So I think that would be a lovely arrangement to sit on your island at home, especially if you have guests coming over and uh, have those bright colors in your home for spring. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, make one yourself, okay? Explore those different types of flowers and how you use them, um, whether it be for line, filler, or whatever. And in terms of how you use them, let's talk about another natural product, oak. And this particular bourbon that we're tasting today is called Oak and Eden. Um, it hails from Bridgeport, Texas, where it's bottled. There's actually not a distillery at that location. Um, it is actually sourced from MGP, which we've referred to that before with some of the companies that do blended products. And so they'll source a distilled bourbon product from someplace else, mix it with other bourbons, and then bottle it. That's what this company does. They source the MGP product, they bottle it in Texas, and it's called Oak and Eden. Now, the thing that makes this one different is this little oak that's nestled in the bottom. It is toasted oak, so very much like uh, when you would uh, kind of finish this in a toasted oak barrel. Uh, they actually put the oak inside the bottle. So they refer to this as in-bottle finishing. So they buy the product, they put the spire in, they put the bourbon in, and that's where it's finished. So that's kind of a cool concept, a little bit different than what a lot of people do. Where we've had some that have been finished in um, port barrels or sherry barrels or just a, Jason, um, just a toasted oak barrel. 
I have had Oak and Eden before. It's very good. Good color in the glass. As you can see from the bottle too, nice kind of caramel color. Definitely a little bit of that sort of caramel butterscotchy flavor, which is very nice. A little bit of spice. Yeah, and, and there's you can definitely taste a little bit of the spice. There's definitely rye in this mash bill. It's corn, rye, and barley. Um, so you can definitely taste that, but it's not offensive. It's not a heavy rye mash bill. It's just, uh, it's very nice. So yeah, you still get a little bit of the vanilla, a little bit of a fruit essence to the taste. And this definitely finishes at the back of my mouth, uh, kind of the back of my tongue. It's really, really very nice. Um, this is one that I know Jason has had at home and that he enjoys, um, on ice especially. So it's a good one. I hope that you'll give it a try. Um, so that about wraps up this episode, folks. Um, until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks so much for joining us.